we were kind of joking around, but also mostly serious where it's like this show kind of taught us how to love. Beth Alderkin from io9 talking with Noelle Stevenson, the showrunner, creator, and mind goddess behind She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. Uh, the series has now come to a close, and I want to start by talking about you. You've had five seasons, a completed story arc. How are you feeling now that it's all over? I'm having a lot of feelings now being at the end, a lot of just kind of like mixed emotions because it is really cool it's like you know i've been keeping aspects of this show a secret for the last five years and to finally get to be able to just like have it all out there and for it to no longer be a secret i'm really really excited about that part but it's also like you know saying goodbye to characters that i have sort of come to think of as my friends it's both exciting but it's also sad it's very bittersweet in a lot of ways for the honor of oh. how has your life changed for you since you started this journey with Adora, Katra, and the other characters? You know, I got married to my wife. I developed this community of people that are some of my closest friends now. Everything has changed and in amazing ways that I couldn't have even imagined. It's a cartoon. It's an 80s reboot. It's, you know, it, it is, that's what it is. But. It is something where I think because of what we went through as a crew, because of the way that the characters' journeys mirror our journeys in so many ways, it is. it was like learning to love openly, be vulnerable, and be open with the people around you in order to get through hard times. It's hard to fight with friends! What character do you feel changed the most and took on a life of their own that you didn't expect? I think the answer has to be Katra. I think the, the way that that character has hit with so many people and the way that she's ended up being such an important character, not just for me and not just for the crew who was sort of pouring our feelings into her, but also to the fans who are seeing a version of this like kind of female anti-hero villain hero character that reflects the darkest, kind of most dangerous, messiest parts of ourselves. So I think that the amount of empathy and the amount of evolution that that character went through, it felt very organic. When you were watching the, the final episode and seeing this story that you had created come to fruition, what was that like? I remember I had gone to the desert with some friends uh, the weekend that I got the animation for the final episode back. And so I, I watched it over and over again, and then I just went back out and I just was like, y'all need to come watch this with me because I don't know what I'm looking at. And my friends just came and they were, they, uh, they had worked on the show with me and we all like got in bed together, just like we were having a slumber party and like I watched it. And then I've, like, I have got Molly on one side crying on this shoulder and then our script coordinator Shane on my other shoulder crying as we're watching. And that was when I was like, yeah, <laughs> we did it.